Hi everyone, it's John Mitchell and welcome to Area of Study 2 which is on change management. So the whole outcome was the last outcome of the course and it's on the management of change. So the first thing we need to do is just look at the concept of change management. The first point in the study design uh, asks for the concept of change management. So really, what is it? Well, organisational change is just simply the adoption of a new behavioural idea by an organisation. Often that comes because of the pressures that are put on an organisation uh, from the dynamic business environment. So think back to uh, area of study one uh, in unit three where we looked at you know, the, the internal and external environments. They're the business environments and they're really dynamic and often change uh, or an organisation might foresee a change that's going to happen in that in the business environments and as a result try and make some changes uh, to either take advantage of that or avoid some issues that are going to occur because of that. Now it's important that organisations, um, well they can be either proactive or reactive and it's important that they're proactive so that you know, they are foreseeing pressures from the dynamic environment trying to get ahead of uh, those particular issues so when they change something it's not because of an impact that has happened and as a result they've, you know, they go oh we better react to that and change, that, that sort of can um, really hinder an organisation and hurt an organisation if they fall behind. Um, you know trends and things like that. If it's an, you know the economy, if they, if an organisation can be proactive, foresee there's going to be some issues in the economy in the future, like consumer confidence or interest rates are going to rise. If they're proactive, they should be able to take advantage of those. But if they're really reactive, it can be you know really hurt the organisation in the long term. Also changes can be incremental, so what that means is we're small ongoing changes, so that could be something small like um, you know, change in policy or implementing a new quality management strategy or something like that, or transformational where there are major changes that happen within an organisation. So just to give you some examples, you know, here's a transformational change, restructure, bar on health due to changes in funding, some of the projects were closed down in the organisation, forcing a restructure of the business so that you know, some of their, their actual departments, you know, smaller departments actually closed down due to the funding. So that was pressure from the government that, you know, that caused that, you know, in terms of funding from the government. And um, as a result, they went undertook some fairly transformational changes. A merger, again, a transformational change, a really large change where we had Kraft and Heinz, we're two separate companies, and then uh, they've joined together to form Kraft Heinz. So that's a merger, two organisations, two separate organisations forming, joining together to form one new organisation. Uh, and you know, incremental change. Sony has gone through a change in quality processes. They've implemented a little bit of technology to try and help improve their quality. They had some issues with uh, some of their products at one stage, and so over the last 18 months, they've sort of looked at uh, implementing some of these quality processes. So that would be an example of an incremental change. Even something as simple change can be, you know, something as simple as a change in management style, going from an autocratic manager to a uh, consultative or, or participative manager. That you know, that's change within an organisation. And what we're going to do in future videos is look at how to manage these particular changes, um, what should be done, what shouldn't be done, and those type of things. The effect of change, because often employees don't, or humans in general, don't necessarily like change. Um, so just managing change, it's important that change is managed well. Uh, so if not, it can result in the employee unrest and we'll get into how to sort of avoid that or how to overcome that in the future videos. Uh, but it can also you know, be the demise of an organisation. So I'm going to use the example of Kodak here. Kodak was a leader obviously in the camera industry. Improvements in technology, it was actually technology that they created themselves in terms of digital cameras, but uh, they didn't really take it commercial. So improvements in technology in the macro environment brought in new competitors also, you know, you know, phones, the improvement of cameras on phones and those type of things. Um, so, you know, changes in the business environments. Kodak was really reactive to those pressures. They, I suppose people would argue that they got complacent and didn't really, you know, thought that they were still a real powerhouse in the industry. And by the time they began to change and realised that, hang on, we really need to change here, it was too late. And as a result, they filed for bankruptcy in 2012. So managing change is really important, but also, you know, that importance of being proactive with change uh, is crucial rather than being reactive. So just to recap, organisational change is the adoption of a new idea or behaviour. Organisations can be proactive or reactive and obviously we want to be proactive as much as possible and changes can be incremental which are the small ongoing changes or transformational which is a larger change. So for questions, activities and more on this video then come on over to teachingbubble.com.